self-defense part three. So we had discussed previously several things. Now let's talk about awareness. Awareness, when, when you're talking about self-defense, and that, that has to be number one. Uh, oftentimes self-defense proponents will <clears throat> talk in depth about that and, and leave everything else out because of the importance of it. It's really easy to leave it out completely and just do the physical stuff or to focus on that entirely and say there's no need for the physical stuff if this is done correctly. And that's true. However, you won't be 100% on that. So you're going to need some, I'm in contact already. Uh, I'm already being attacked. I'm already being struck. I'm already being grabbed. I'm already being being otherwise assaulted. Um, and so we need to know how to get out of those situations. However, don't leave um, the awareness and the mindset and the attitude uh, out of the training. And uh, strictly for the purposes of training, this is happening now and this is my response. Because it leaves out a, a major aspect, which is what we call you prevent anything from happening. You confront when it's about to happen, the need for your full attention. And ultimately, we prevail. And prevail, prevail means going home and escaping alive. Um, and actually unharmed, not just alive. Um, so when, when we talk about self-defense, we, we have to discuss, okay, how do I prevent anything from happening to me? Paying attention, don't go to places where there's a potential for violence, particularly alcohol is served. You know, you're going to run into potential for violence anytime alcohol is on the table, so to speak. Uh, drugs as well, but it's different kind of violence there. Um, so, uh, Stay away from those situations and, and you will lessen your effect. Of course, being out late at night, where are you, <clears throat> where are you going, how do you get home? All these things have to be addressed. They will fall into the category of, of preventing. Another thing is how you carry yourself, your presence, that's really important too. And people don't talk about that enough. Your own presence, whether it is... <sighs> taking up space or becoming very small, almost invisible to predators. These are two ways to deal with that. Confronting in the standpoint of, of, of being the big guy and, and trying to um, intimidate other people, not a good look, not a good play. It might work in some situations, but it's a good way to escalate things without saying a word. Okay, another thing then, uh, getting home alive, uh, escaping unharmed. I've heard this said many times, if someone pulls a knife, run. Okay, where? Where are you going to run? Are you going to run to your vehicle and try to get into it? Are you going to run all the way home four miles? Are you going to run into a convenience store and seek shelter among the Wonderful citizens there that are surely going to protect you should the person follow you in. So what's your plan when you say run? We got to do that better. Fine to run, fine to escape. Let's just say escape and evade instead of running because some people just aren't good runners. So now you're going to say, well, that's their problem. It is their problem and it's yours too. Should you have an injury to your leg or any other thing that prevents you from running like bad icy conditions or something like that. So you have to take that into consideration. So, you know, prevailing ultimately means I'm home safe. Nobody got hurt, me nor uh, anyone that intended to hurt me. That's, that's prevailing. That's part four, part three, part four coming soon.